Hey everybody, thanks for taking the time out of your busy days to join me here and get pumped for PowerShell 5, which uh, is actually already here. It's been here for well over a year now and it came packaged with Windows 10. But what we're going to talk about, what we're excited about here is PowerShell 5.1 is coming to Windows Server 2016, which I'm sure many of you know, launches at Ignite September 25th. So it's going to give us a, a whole new way and we're going to need it because there's a lot of new features that are going to require PowerShell in order to manage and automate those infrastructure aspects. So let's jump right in. And first, what I want to do is just, just talk a little bit about 5 versus 5.1. So again, PowerShell 5, Windows 10, based on WMF5, the Windows Management Framework, and requires .NET 4.5. So I'm sure many of you have played with Windows 10 and... Uh, Maybe you've played with PowerShell 5, maybe you haven't, but it's on there and, uh, and it's great because there's a lot of really nice things that we can do with it and uh, just uh, a big step up from 2, 3, and 4. And by the way, they've always been so good with backwards compatibility. 5 works all the way back to Windows 7 and Server 2008 R2. Now with, uh, with 5.1, that's actually WMF 5.1 and uh, you'll need .NET 4.6. And sorry about my pen. This is, uh, my pen is drunk. Go home, pen. <laughs> uh, so, Server 2016. It's, it's a big deal. Again, it's coming out soon, and, uh, and there's a lot of great features that we're going to talk about here. And one that I want to show you. We're actually going to do a really fun demo here, creating our own nano server and remotely managing it, because PowerShell is the only way to manage nano server. So, uh, let's take a look at some of the tools, some of the, across all the tools. We got some great features. So on the console side, we now get syntax coloring, which is great because when you're firing off those one-liners and everything's one color, like it was before PowerShell 5, it gets tricky to see what you're doing. And, and you can't really spot those errors while you're typing them. You know, you hit enter and you get that big blob of red text and you're like, oh, now I got to recall my last command and try to hunt down what, where I uh, mistyped. So now you can see it as you're typing on the fly. I'll save you a little bit of time there. Another one here for the, uh, for the ISC is transcription. We've had this in the console, but we have not had this in the ISC. So we now get system-wide auditing and logging. This is really great because we're going to know every single little piece of PowerShell that was executed in our environment by us or by others. And what's really nice about this is there's a new group policy setting that we can use to control this. So yeah, literally every single little code of uh, a piece of PowerShell that's executed is logged. And, uh, and this will also help us because how many times have you written some PowerShell and then, you know, just closed out, you're like, oh, I'll, ne I'll never need that code again. And then a few days later, you're like, oh, crap, I need that code again. So you're, you know, scrambling, trying to find uh, or rewrite it or find, a, find how, how to do it. So now you can just look in your logs and say, oh, there's that piece of code. Great. I don't have to write it anymore. So transcription's awesome, system-wide, easy to work with, and uh, gives you just a, a wealth of information. Like you can see here in the screenshot, I turned it on, ran a Git service, stopped it, and then fired up Notepad here, which uh, gave us all that information about who ran it, where they ran it, what time they ran it, what tool they ran it with, and then what they actually ran, and even what the results were. So cool stuff right there. Uh, let's see, what else we got here? Oh, DSC enhancements. Uh, desired state configuration obviously is a really big deal helping us to, uh, to, to declaratively define our infrastructure. Well, one of the big enhancements that we're going to get is partial configurations. And this is a pretty big deal because it's going to enable a whole new level of collaboration. When you're trying to stand up a server or a cluster of servers and you need them all to do specific things, usually we have a lot of different people involved, right? We've got developers, we've got database administrators, we've got uh, regular administrators. <laughs> That's a terrible way to say it. Awesome administrators those uh, administrators that are responsible for the OS layer, right? All of us, IT pros. So what partial configurations allow us to do now is give, let those, those individuals, they're responsible for their layer. They can build their configurations the way they, they want to, and, uh, and our database administrators and our developers can build their configurations, and, and, and we can have one global or one big script that the uh, local configuration manager will pull all together, compile it all into an MOF, and, uh, and beautiful. So yeah. Really nice way to get some collaboration across all of our team. Everybody can focus on their specific parts. All right, 
let's go over some of the cool features here. So these are the big ones. These are some of my favorite features that are in PowerShell 5. I'll point out one of these that's in 5.1. Starting with package management, this is, uh, this is the way we're going to do software in the future. Because right now, if you need to stand up a server and get some software on it, how do you do it? Not easily, right? <laughs> MSI packages, ooh. Setups, oh, Wizards, oh, Yeah, no fun. So package management's the future. You know, obviously this is like apt-get and yum in Linux. It's coming to Windows. And the beauty, since this is all in PowerShell, is now we can script out our software installations very easily. So that's going to be a, a big deal, and that's one of the big, big, big features here in PowerShell 5. Another one, PowerShell Direct. Oh, this is cool. My pen's wasted again. Okay, there we go. PowerShell Direct is, uh, is going to be a part of our everyday lives especially when we're dealing with things like nano server. So the really cool thing about PowerShell Direct is you do not need any sort of network configuration or remote management settings like RDP or VM Connect. Those all have network and remote configuration requirements around them. PowerShell Direct, you just specify your virtual machine name when you're on the host, on a Hyper-V host, and it just pops right into it. And it's, it's incredibly quick and easy to work with, and it's going to make development, testing, troubleshooting that much easier with our VMs. Because a lot of the times when there's something wrong with your VM, it's usually at the network or remote management layer, right? So PowerShell Direct, awesome. Another great one here, advanced debugging. This, uh, this is one of my favorite features simply because right now debugging in PowerShell, or I should say not now, but before PowerShell 5, was somewhat painful. And what I mean by that is Say that you've got a big complex script, and somewhere in that script, something is going wrong. How do you track it down? Before PowerShell 5, we littered our code with write debug statements, or we set breakpoints all over the place. We were chasing our tail, trying to hone in on where that problem is. So with, uh, with PowerShell 5, we get control break, break all, which means when a long running script when you see something go wrong, you can just hit Control B on your keyboard and boom, it'll drop you right into that code. So right away, you're in the general vicinity and it'll be a lot easier to track down. We can also now debug locally and remotely. So we can debug scripts on remote machines. That's a big win. And we can also debug scripts running in a job. Another big win. What else we got here? Oh, yeah, right here. Anybody try to compress or decompress files? Prior to PowerShell 5, oh, I have many times, and I can tell you it's not fun. It requires a lot of code, and it's unstable at best. So we have two commandlets, very, very simple one-liners to now zip and unzip files. Huge. Another one here, programming enhancements. Now, this is, this is going to be uh, one of those things that developers are going to love, and IT pros are, will love once you understand how classes and object-oriented programming works, because what this does for us is allows us to clean up our code, get better code reuse, but really on the DSC side of things, authoring DSC resources just got a lot easier and will result in about three times less code. So object-oriented features come to PowerShell. Here's a 5.1 feature here. We can now manage local users and groups. So we've got a handful of commandlets you know, things like get user, create user, get group, create group, find out what users are in groups, find out what uh, groups have users. There's all kinds of great commandlets for managing our local users and groups. And there's a ton of new commandlets, just an absolute ton, and a lot of commandlets with new parameters, a couple of which I'll show you here when we get into our demo. But uh, you can do things now like session-based copying, which is a really big deal because that's the only way we're going to be able to get files onto our nano servers other than packages is, is to do, uh, do session-based copying. And it's so easy to do. We got a two session and a from session parameter on a copy item that makes it an absolute breeze. We can also do things like create symbolic links now. We can work with temporary files, work at the recycle bin. The list goes on and on. Lots and lots of new command lines, all of which are going to make our lives easier in PowerShell. All right, who wants a demo? So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you the future here of PowerShell with Windows Server 2016. Nano Server, if you're unfamiliar with it, is this new extremely lightweight, headless, 64-bit only purpose-built deployment option in Server 2016. That's a mouthful. 
So here's what they did. They stripped out 32-bit support. They stripped out all the roles and features, zero footprint. How are we going to get roles and features onto our nano servers? You guessed it, packages. We can predefine packages in our image, or we can download packages right from nano server through PowerShell. There's tons of different package uh, providers out there, packages, everything. And, uh, and, and it's also, they've also removed win logon. So you're not going to log on to nano servers. You're going to do all of your management, testing, troubleshooting remotely. Now, obviously, the holy grail for this stuff is going to be DSC, right? So DSC with Virtual Machine Manager, we're going to be able to, uh, to really treat our operating systems like cattle, not like pets. And that's kind of where we're going here. You know, if anybody's familiar with containers, containers are just that, right? They're, they're cattle. If, if they're sick, we don't get on, we don't troubleshoot them, we just blow them away, and we spin up another one. Nano servers kind of going in that direction because it's so lightweight and so easy to spin up, spins up in about 20 seconds that uh, we no longer have to treat these things like they're pets. Now, what else is Nano Server good for? Well, it's great for scale out file server clusters, great for Hyper-V clusters. Those are really the two big use cases right now, but they're also gonna be great for containerized workloads because we're only gonna put on these things exactly what we need to run our workloads. Really, really cool. This is really what's, what's tearing up the scene in 2016 and, uh, and what everybody's excited about. But again, it's headless. There is no way to log into this thing. So we need to do everything with PowerShell. In fact, you're gonna see that with a lot of these low-level features or new features in Turbo 2016. The only way to, to, to really manage them, at least in TP5 right now, the last beta, is through PowerShell. All right, let me, uh, let me share my screen here. All right, everybody see that? So what we're gonna do is, uh, first I'm gonna show you how to spin up a nano server, show you what it looks like, and then we will, uh, I'm gonna show you that new copy item parameter so we're going to take a file from our local machine here. This is, a, by the way, a Server 2016 TP5 machine. And we're going to copy that file over to our nano server. But first, before we do that, i got to show you this tip. I love showing people this tip because, especially going forward, when you need to fire up PowerShell, just rip off one-liners, how do you launch it right now? I'm going to guess a lot of people go through the Start menu. right? They go like this, they go to PowerShell, they right-click on it, they run it as administrator. Oh, it's a lot of clicking, a lot of wasted time. There's a much better way to do it. So if you right click on the taskbar, head into properties, you'll see this little navigation here. See this? Now before I click on that, I'm going to right click on the start button. Notice these command prompts here? By putting a checkbox here and hitting OK, they now turn into PowerShell. And now to launch PowerShell as an administrator, what you can do is do a Windows key XA left arrow enter. Now I, I, I literally do every morning about three sets with five reps of that. Just do it, just put it into your muscle memory. Oh, thank you, let's do it again. Windows X, A, left, enter. Oh, my left key didn't work. Boom, just keep doing that over and over and over. And uh, greatest way to launch PowerShell ever. All right, let's get into some code here. Now, let me, let me give you a little setup. So. Let me get all my pieces up here. You like that? Isn't that some good, efficient use of screen real estate there? <laughs> all right. So let me uh, let me show you how Nano Server works. So here's how it works. I have the uh, TP5 Windows Server TP5 installation media here. In there, there's a directory called Nano Server. In there, there's a directory called Nano Server Image Generator. So what we do, and by the way, what this contains is the PowerShell bits that we need to generate a Nano Server image and a Nano Server VHD, which we're going to tie to a virtual machine. So what I did is I took that and I copied it locally. And there it is right there. And then I ran some PowerShell, which I'll show you what it looks like here shortly, to generate this nanonug.vhd. Tie it to a virtual machine, fire it up, and boom, you got a nano server ready to go. So let me show you what that looks like. Here's what it looks like right here. So what I'm doing here is just importing those PowerShell bits. Right, boom, there they are. Gets access to those three commandlets, create a nano server image, get a nano server image and edit a nano server image. And then I generate a password here. And then I'm not going to run this because I already did because it takes about five minutes. But essentially what you do is you just point it to where, uh, where that image is, which by the way, if we head back into the nano server directory here, I'm just going to go right onto the installation media. Here it is. So there it is. 
There's the image generator, which contains all the PowerShell. There's some predefined packages for getting some of the more common roles on. And there's the nano server uh, Windows image. All right, so this, the, the, first, the first couple of uh, parameters here just point it to that installation media. What we want our VHD, the name of it, to be. Deployment type, is this going to be a host or a guest? It's going to be a guest. The addition, standard data setter, and we also have essentials coming out for Server 2016. And then some predefined packages. So this is going to be a file server with Defender on it. That's going to be what this nano server's role and purpose in life is. And then we're going to enable the remote management port, obviously, so we can get on with PowerShell and do some fun things. Give it a computer name. We're going to call this nano nug, and we'll tie the administrative password. So I did all of this. And the result of that was, as we saw on the C drive there, that VHD right there. So now what we need to do is create a virtual machine. So I'm just going to do a new VM here, give it the name nano nug, point it to that nano server VHD, and give it 512 megs of startup memory. Let's do it. So I'll run that. Oh, look at that. What do we have over there? We've got our nano nug server ready to go. Now let's start it up. There it is. It's running. Want to see what nano looks like? Let's go ahead and uh, connect here. Make this full screen so you can see it. Oh, no. Our nano is dead. What did we do? All right, so, um, hey, my nano server is back up and running. Let's see if this works this time. So our image is done. Let me just flip back here. One second, I'll be back to the questions here. All right, so we're back. And uh, let's make sure that VHD is in there. There it is. We got a brand new one here. Let's give this some more memory. But yeah, I, I've fired up clusters of nano servers all with 512s and, and it works fine. So we'll just see, maybe just giving this a little kick in the head, we'll, we'll do something. Oh, we're looking good here. And we still got five minutes. So this, oh, it worked. Cool, cool. Now, I, I pushed that VHD all over the place, too. I didn't actually generate it on this machine, um, which may have been the reason that it didn't work. I've had that happen a few times. But I'm going to log in here. Just to show you what the console looks like, hey, here it is. So here is what Nano Server looks like. Again, we logged in, but you're not really logged in because the, about the only thing you can do here is manage networking. So you can manage your network adapters there. And you can also manage your firewall rules. And you can sit, reset WinRM the Windows Remote Management Protocol, which PowerShell relies on, obviously, for, for management. So now that that's up, let's walk through this here. Let's go full screen. Get back up to the top. So let me generate some creds here. Perfect. And now we're going to create a new PowerShell session using PowerShell Direct here, because notice that's the VM name parameter. There's also VM ID. Um, rather than the way we used to use it, computer name. So we'll just go ahead and store that session right inside of that variable. If we take a look at it here, there it is. Cool. There it is. We've got a PowerShell session. Now, we're going to create a file locally here, and it's going to generate PowerShell 1,000 times inside of that file. There it is. So we've got that on our local machine here. In fact, just flip back to the C drive here and do an LS. There it is. So there is that, that file. And now we're going to use that session, using the two session parameter, push it over there. And boom, we've, we've got our file over our nano server. And we can verify that by jumping onto that nano server. We'll enter the PS session against that variable. And look at this. Here's how you can tell that you are on your nano server right here. We are on nano nugs. So we could run a get service. We could run a uh, get process. Lot, look at how few processes there are, 20 as opposed to 50 on, uh, on a full server with the desktop experience. And now if we do an LS, we'll see that file is right there. Boom. Now we can even edit it here with the PS edit. So we're on our local machine here. But if we do a PS edit against it, it's going to pull that file from our nano nug here. And we can edit it right on our local machine, even though it lives over there on nano nug. So cool. I'm glad we got to get that demo off. Some live troubleshooting there. Thanks, guys, for the help. That was just awesome. Uh, let me head back here, see if we've got any more questions. OK. Uh, let's see, uh, Ryan. Mentioned 20, Server 2016 courses are coming. Are you going to be putting out courses on PowerShell 5.1? Yes, uh, eventually. <laughs> but we've got a lot of focus on Server 2016, obviously, since that's dropping next month. So uh, we're going to be hitting those hard because that's going to be a really big deal, I think, for everybody. Everyone, And if I don't know if any of you have noticed, but uh, the MCSA 
uh, certification for Server 2016, the exam objectives just dropped last week. So you can see that right on Microsoft's site. Um, yeah, a lot of PowerShell in those objectives too. PowerShell is going to be something that we're all going to be very fluent in in order to obviously pass those exams, more importantly, do our jobs. Right on. Thanks, Darshan. Yeah, we'll have lots of demos and labs uh, coming up in our in our Server 2016 courses that everybody will get plenty of hands-on training with. Anybody else? Uh, is WDS, the Windows Deployment Services, one of those pre-done role packages for Nano Server? That's a great question. I'll have to look into that. I'm not really sure. I, I live in um, System Center Configuration Manager, and uh, obviously that's that's going to be a, a preferred way of deploying droves of Nano Servers. Absolutely, you're welcome, all. Thank you. Thanks for hanging in there with me and uh, working through that. That was that was great.